Can I even see? Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> Look, this stuff is never very good. Uh, we should mention we got a complaint from our Friday video that uh, I was standing on- You didn't on... even start the introduction. What are no, you doing? No, we'll do that in a minute. Uh, I was standing on this side, but my audio was coming out on that side, and Seb was standing there, but his audio was there. And He was We're... disturbed because he had me in his left here when I was on his right, and so on and so forth. We're sorry. confused. Sorry, we're very sorry. We're confused. Sebastian Bourdais, you just drove very, very, very hard for 95 laps, got very close to the front, and then you did your best to work miracles towards the end. You were just telling me about what it was like dealing with oversteer for the final 28 laps or whatever. I think we're also trying to make fuel, but tell folks what it's like of applying opposite lock to manage that oversteer. There comes a point where you can't do that when there's nothing left when the there's no, le no 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 tire left yeah unfortunately it just uh yeah i, I honestly uh, not quite sure what happened but uh, we we definitely uh, played the fuel game today uh, the guys in the timing stand uh, decided uh, after that yellow well let's try something we p20 like lap third three or something yeah. oh, you were in so super we early. Uh, we made the we made the two stopper tried tried to make the two stopper work really uh, from lap 92 or whatever that was um, so yeah that was a long race um, a lot of laps on the tires and uh, on the high degradation track it definitely is not as much the, the fuel saving that's slowing you down but just the sheer amount of laps that you're having to manage on one set of tires uh, and the, the the last five to eight laps on each stint that just ends up being that much harder than everybody else around you so you were part of that early stopping group, really hoping for a yellow to follow that would help you all to capitalize. Didn't really get that, unfortunately, for what was going on that wasn't in your immediate vicinity. There's a kid named Colton Herta, who appears to be somewhat decent at Laguna Seca, led whatever it was, 91 of 95 laps or some insane thing. Just ran off and hit, was never seriously challenged. He was challenged for a, a lap and five turns by Rossi. Rossi got a little sideways spun, but kid ran off and hid. Uh, boy, that was just an ass kicking almighty. Behind him, there is an element of luck that comes with, with Alex Pelot. And I'm not saying that to be dismissive, like he isn't driving hard and achieving good things, but if there is someone to have a problem in front of him, they will. Will Power running, I think, second or whatever it was, pit some sort of engine problem, loses two laps, blows P2. And Award is running P3 for a while, keeping the title close, just 25-point separation coming into the race. He gets passed and passed again in the last couple laps. Falls back to, I think, fifth or so. Now it's out to, like, 35 points. There's going to have to be, you know, Pelot's motor is going to have to have problems or a wheel's going to have to fall off in the race at Long Beach. Some title ramifications here. Herta and Andretti Autosport doing big things. Had a couple of people, uh, that being Scott Dixon and Marcus Erickson now mathematically out of the title hunt. Joseph is still in it, but he's like 48 points back. He can only get a maximum of 54, so realistically... Yeah, if Pelou starts the race, so amazing. There's not much there. So we had all that stuff going on. Uh, Romain Grochon, the person who hates me will never talk to me again. Um, he put on the show that kept things alive. I see... Uh, I see another Frenchman in the race there, some guy named uh, Simon Pagano talking to your beautiful parents who are here. Um, are you abreast of any of these things that are going on? Are your team Is your team keeping you posted on, hey, this person's coming, this person's trying to do this, that, and the other while you're trying to go forward? Does the whole atmosphere of the race enter your cockpit at all? Or do you are you so focused on your achievements that you, you learn this stuff from idiots like me after the race? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I took a look at the, the results there, but no, I, I didn't know a whole lot of what was going on, obviously, when the, when the leader uh, caught us there at the end, uh, when we are on on fumes and, and uh, no tires left. Uh, I let Colton and then I saw Palou and let Palou go and then I, I heard that Roma was coming so I let him go as well and so I kind of knew what the top three was. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, you were talking about luck for Palou. I, I wouldn't put it to luck, honestly. I think he's just uh, he's just been really impressive uh, for only second year in, in the series as challenging and competitive as it is in a new group. 
having to learn you know some of the tracks and and just uh, adapting to a, a whole different uh, team like that but it just also shows you uh, how you know Chip Ganassi Racing is just such a powerhouse and just uh, you know provides the equipment that the guy needs to to be able to perform at that level and uh, you know just just overall still very 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 impressed with Pelou. Um so him so him obviously in the sequences just like taking off when we're you know saving a lot of fuel and but but you know just the amount of uh, pace they had there uh, they create their own luck they just get to the front. Uh, Somehow he always seems to dig himself out of you know tough positions in qualifying and makes it to the next stage mm. and and you know starts in the top five or top six or whatever and that's where you gotta be to avoid the chaos and and the problems and you know I guess Romain was obviously super super impressive we can talk a lot about Colton but here you know if you don't mess things up and your car is on rails like it's been for him um, you know it's pretty hard to lose around here yeah um, you know clean air being as key as it is. And uh, you see a guy like Romain not making it to fast 12 and, and working his way all the way to, back to second. Uh, there were a couple of incidents, obviously, uh, at the, on the lead pack, but still, I'm sure they had to make some serious headways. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I'm, am I really surprised? No, he's obviously a good guy, a very <laughs> fast guy. And uh, I drove that car from 21st to 7th a couple of years ago here, so it's, I think, pretty darn good. Uh, and Olivier is definitely uh, knows what he's, what he's doing with that thing. Race engineer Olivier Boisson. Let's close on this, Seb. <sighs> One more to go, and the freaking PA announcer is back. That guy knows what he, he has binoculars somewhere. There's, is there a red laser dot on us? Are we being sighted by him? He just fires up whenever. It we're just here. did a sound check. That's all. Sure, he'll he's gonna come back with something. Um, final race of the year coming up. This happens every year, so I'm not totally surprised. But I must admit, there is a little bit of a feeling of sadness. I don't know how to put it, but there's always that, yay, we've come so far, but the party's about to end. Well, the party's almost over anyways, because really, you know, Palou just pretty much all but wrapped up the championship. I mean, if he doesn't come away with that championship, it, will, it won't, you know, there really would not be any justice in the in racing which obviously we know there isn't but yeah. uh, it, it would be very unfair I think he is a very very deserving champion uh, has made basically no mistakes uh, just been kind of a bystander of some circumstances and and uh, some some things going against them pretty good yeah. Cou couple engines uh, uh, some penalties obviously because of the engine penalties uh, got run into and taken out um, so yeah I think I think they, they deserve it pretty good so do you come into the final race of the year each year with any sense of, I don't know if it's nostalgia or what, I mean, you've got to go back home and do adult non-racing things and then come back to Long Beach, so it's not like you've got a lot of time to just sit here and stew and think about it, but is there ever that feeling of like, you know, well, the school year's ending and now we kind of wait until we get to come back and see our friends again? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't even know if I'll be back, but, uh, you know, that's that's more the, the question. But I'm not really thinking so much about that. Um, you know, I've had, I've had some really good days and, and really enjoyed myself here. Uh, um, obviously, you know, I think we, like like we keep talking about, I think we, we made things a little better here at AJ Foyt Racing. It's just not quite up for the challenge, really, with the guys at the front. But uh, uh, I think we're going to go back a little closer to uh, our wheelhouse uh, on the street course. It definitely seems like our street course package closer to, obviously, what we've showed here this weekend. We we're pretty decent at Portland as well and a couple of other places. But uh, overall, it seems like we, we've got better chances on street courses. So we'll just go and do that. And, uh, and you know, the season's not over because there's Petit Le Mans after that. And uh, it's never right. really over, you know. It's It's kind of... It's it's weird these days because Daytona being as early as it is and, and Petit being pretty late uh, in November at least this year again. Well, the break and is yeah. really short and we always have a few test sessions. So yeah, I mean things move around, programs change and whatnot. But I, I never really get so much that you know end of the year uh, nostalgia because it's it just keeps going. So we'll see we'll see what it will be made of very soon. All right, this is your final WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca hamburger and french fry show. We got one more weekend of shows to do, at least in IndyCar. Then we're going to say farewell to this championship. This is getting boring and way too serious, brother. Like, what are we doing? Like, we've lost the energy. Are you already tired of me or something? Oh, shit, he didn't answer.
<laughs> <laughs> I, I almost, that was the best. I almost fell.